Today is the one year anniversary of George Floyd. And, you know, you know this, I know this. And um, I want to share this tweet from the People's City Council. I'll read it to you, Joy. Uh, this is the People's City Council here in L.A. So Mitch O'Farrell, um, for a quick refresher, I don't want to get like too hyper local here, but we had um, a, a, a an event called Echo Park Rising here in Los Angeles where they were trying to brutalize the houseless community in Echo Park and a bunch of people came to try to stop that from happening. And um, the police basically brutalized all the people there and did the sweep in Echo Park Lake anyway. And Mitch O'Farrell was one of the uh, was the member of city council that oversaw all this. He oversaw all of this. People are calling on him to resign. Of course, he's not going to. But he oversaw all this along with the mayor and the LAPD. And they are all completely out of control. And none of them should have their jobs. But uh, anyway, he tweeted one year ago today, the whole world watched the horror unfolding in Minneapolis as George Floyd's life was brutally stolen from him in an excruciating nine minutes and 29 seconds. People City Council responds, excited for elected officials in Los Angeles to make hollow statements about George Floyd while they vote to approve a budget that gives $3 billion to the LAPD. Fuck off. Well said, People City Council. And so, Joy, my question... Um, have we made any progress here? It's a, it's been a year since one of many, many um, murders by the police force. And uh, but the George Floyd murder, which I guess in a couple weeks, we should be hearing what kind of sentence um, is going to be dished out. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I truly don't think we have made progress. Um, people like to cite uh, the George Floyd bill, the legislation that passed. However, I've actually read it um, and it calls on more police. Uh, there's a, it calls on higher budget to employ more freaking police. So I suggest everyone read it. It is not a victory. It is not. And, and the fact that they're putting his name on it to just kind of like, you know, uh, convince people that something's being done is pretty gross. Um, and, you know, Seattle for a while had, uh, you know, um, some victories, but I know, uh, you know, some legislators were pushing back on it and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, we still haven't defunded. I don't know if we ever will. Um, cops are still not being, um, trained as far as how to handle mental health patients. Um, uh, we're still seeing countless black people and brown people being murdered and brutalized. Um, we're, we've still seen how many people, um, you know, just completely brutalized by protesting what happened to George Floyd. Um, I, I'm not seeing any progress. I mean, I'm just not. I mean, I don't know 100% of what's going on in each city, but right. overall, I, I don't think shit's been done. Um, I know when you know, the verdict came out and it was like, we have victory. Not to me. I want to see what the hell his sentence is. I'm not excited. That's step one. Step one right. was being found guilty. Now what's his sentence going to be? Is it going to be probation? Is it going to be two years? What's it going to be? That's when I'm going to find out. And after that, if he, if it is an acceptable sentence, which is hopefully pretty fucking long. Um, I want to see what legislation will in fact come from that. Right. No, no, I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent. I mean, and I don't want to say that when they read the verdict, I, I did feel some relief and I think everyone did and, and, and yeah. deservedly so. And that, and that's totally good. And, and, and I'm sure there was some relief to the family too, even. Um, but you know, it's okay to say, yes, there is some relief here. Yes, there is some reason for joy here, but we still have so far to go. And he has not even been sentenced yet. I mean, it's totally, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can't like, you got to grasp onto those moments of hope. Like you really do. Otherwise you're, you're gonna, you're gonna lose your mind, but, yeah. but 
you also shouldn't overstate it either, where it's like, yes, breathe a sigh of relief, but we still have so far to go. And and I'm with you. I mean, I, I do think there have been some defunding efforts in, in some pockets of the country, and, and uh, that's great, but systemically, the rot is still there. And I know where I live in Los Angeles, the police are getting more money. They are getting more, not less, and that's a pretty common story. So yeah, systemically, we are none the wiser. We have made no progress whatsoever, uh, despite historic amounts of civil unrest, which just proves something we already knew. The police just exist to brutalize um, the working class and regular people and to uphold the needs of the ruling class. That, that's what the police are for. They're not here to serve and protect. They are part of a uh, brutal, systemically racist system that was put in place for a reason and cannot be reformed this can't be reformed like like maybe and i don't even know if this is the case or not maybe at some point decades ago reform was a possibility i don't even know if it ever was i I don't know i mean if it was it was before i was alive but now that ship has sailed there's no reason for this system to exist the way it does no reason there's, I mean, I mean, just the job of a police officer is so ridiculous when you break it down what that job really entails. You're sending someone who is grossly undertrained and handling nearly every situation, uh, was incredibly poorly screened, maybe a member of a gang, maybe a member of a white supremacist group. That all happens on the regular because white supremacist groups have been infiltrating the cops for decades on purpose because they know they're given a badge and a gun and impunity. So, and they show up to situations with, again, a badge and a gun. And uh, in most cases, very horrible intentions. And if they don't have those very horrible intentions, usually they get weeded out pretty freaking quick. That's the police. I do want to, I do want to clarify. I didn't mean uh, mental health, my mental health comment per George Floyd. I was talking about two other cases, but Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're absolutely correct. And I think, you know, one of the things we have to keep in mind is even though Chauvin was found guilty, there are four other cops who watched it who protected him, who held off people, who said, check his pulse and things like that. Why aren't they in jail? Because of our system. They are just as guilty. So we can't act like this is a huge victory. And then also my concern is we're seeing a lot of, you know, Republicans saying, don't say that nothing happens to cops when they kill black people, because look at Chauvin. So that one instance is being used for rationalization of, well, but Chauvin was, you know, found guilty. So, you know what I mean? So there are definitely- No, 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 I totally know what you mean. The one thing, the one thing that's the other side of that coin, and I know we've had like this discussion before too, is- this is the first time in recent history where the public outrage towards him was still very much burning strong when the trial happened. That usually by design is not the case. They wait out the clock. They, they say, oh, the wheels of justice turn slow, except when we don't want them to. But here we want them to because we want you to forget about this before it goes to trial. This is the first time they weren't able to pull that off. And hopefully it becomes the way it's all it always happens i mean well hopefully you know you don't have police systemically murdering black people that would be (laughs) that that's what we want but but you know you'd rather have the wheels of justice turn in a way where it's like okay the public outcry is still where it needs to be when this person goes on trial and for and, and that's the one you know, the one reassuring thing or not reassuring, but, but the one kind of reason for optimism um, with that whole thing was that yes, the public outcry was still burning when he went on trial. That needs to be the norm. That should always be the way it is. That shouldn't be the exception. That should be the rule always forever. Absolutely. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. 
get your news on with Rhonda Twana I know what's going on We're getting our news on today yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone We'll go through it together and make it our own Get your news on with Rhonda Twana I know what's going on